Good afternoon, Leander ISD. Welcome to another edition of Hot Topics. I'm Chief Communications Officer Corey Ryan, and I'm going to introduce some of Bruce's friends, some of our Leander ISD experts, to address some of the big questions that we know are in our community this week. First, starting off, Assistant Superintendent John Graham is going to be talking about the triple tier bus slash bell schedule presentation that will be in our Board of Trustees meeting tomorrow on Thursday. Um, the question is to John, what is the district considering and why is it considering a change to school start and end times? How did parents, community members, teachers, and students provide feedback? Um, again, this is about a two-year process of collecting information um, about how we need to adjust or consider adjusting school start and end times and school length to be able to address issues in transportation and instructional minutes. And pass it off to John. Hello, this is John Graham, Assistant Superintendent of Campus Activities and Sports. So why is Leander ISD considering adjusting its start and end times? The Bell Schedule Committee was charged over 18 months ago to look at the impact our current schedule has on meeting our students' academic needs, the impact to our transportation department, and our budget. The committee recommends two changes. The first is to explore a three-tier system with 30 to 35 minutes between start and end time at all three levels. This allows us to more efficiently transport our students and it provides traffic relief between campuses that are located next to each other and allows the district to have potentially have cost savings in the transportation budget. The second change is to add additional minutes to the school day. This helps provide transition time at the elementary level and at the high school level, it provides additional minutes to stay in compliance with required course minutes for career and technical courses and IB courses while still allowing our high schools to provide flex or advocate time. How have we involved parents, students, and or uh, teachers in feedback into this discussion? The committee has, has uh, received feedback from stakeholders in multiple ways. We received feedback from a thought exchange. The thought exchange had 4,800 participants. We also re received feedback from stakeholders in our district-wide improvement committee, committee meetings and through principal meetings. This feedback has been valuable in the committee's recommendation for the proposed 2020-2021 bell schedule. Thank you. Summer is just around the corner and summer means reading in Leander ISD. Here's ELA Secondary Curriculum Coordinator Jen Abramson talking about the Summer Reading for All program. Hey y'all. Hey all y'all readers out there in Leander ISD. Coming to you from one of two epicenters of all things literacy, the ERC, sometimes known as the SERC, Secondary and Elementary Resource Center. We are here boxing up and bagging up books for Summer Reading for All Launch 2020. We will be deploying all of these hot titles in two phases before the end of the school year. Some of these hot titles will be landing in our backpacks to go home with our backpack program. And then on May 26th, during the meal service um, lines, we will also be distributing books then as well. Come get your hot reads, Leander ISD. Looking forward to more reading reminders throughout the summer and a special challenge. Everyone, staff and students, need to check out a book on Sora. Get your ebook TBR list rocking and keep reading. Remote learning has been a part of our everyday life now, and here's Executive Director of Curriculum, Jennifer Collins, giving an idea of what our teaching and learning team has been learning and what we are doing for remote learning right now. Our staff and students have done a lot of learning over the last six weeks. As we continue to explore remote learning, we continue to learn more about strategies that work well to meet the needs of each and every student. We know that each student has unique um, opportunities in their home, that each student also has unique barriers in their home. And so every week whenever I'm working with campus administrators or classroom teachers or our curriculum staff, we hear amazing ways that um, people are being innovative to be able to reach out so that students can continue their learning. We know that it hasn't been perfect, we know that it hasn't been seamless, and so we need to continue to learn and explore possibilities about synchronous versus asynchronous learning. Um, the feedback that we have received from parents and teachers over the last couple of weeks has really helped to guide us as we think about the future with remote learning, trying to figure out exactly what is going to best meet the needs of our community. In our remote learning program, we know that tech access technology and internet connectivity is essential. Here's Interim Chief Technology Officer giving a brief update on how we're pursuing improvements to our remote access to both technology and internet connectivity. 
Our team is continuing to explore options for possibly providing services to families who may not currently have access or reliable access to the internet. Um, we are looking into all options, including uh, mounting devices onto buses and then possibly parking these buses in identified locations. And we're also looking into individual hotspots that could be provided to families. Um, I will continue to update everyone as we have more information. Thanks. We know that for so many of our families, help goes beyond what we do in our traditional schools and with our teaching and learning. Here's Executive Director for the Leander ISD Educational Excellence Foundation, Kristen Hughley, talking about the status of the LEAF Emergency Fund. Hi there, Kristen Hughley here with LEAF, and we wanted to share an update regarding our emergency fund. Earlier this year, we established a fund to help Leander ISD families who are struggling due to COVID-19. We partnered with Hill Country Community Ministries to provide financial assistance through them for the families who need it the most. We wanted to share an update with you that we've been able to help 17 families with utilities assistance, 9 families with housing assistance, and 5 families with HEB gift cards for gas and household items. We are super thrilled and excited to share that update with you, but there is so much more work to be done. So if you're in a position where you're able to give, we ask that you please do so. You can look at more information at leaftx.org, that's L-E-E-F-T-X.org, slash emergency dash fund. We also want to encourage LISD families who may need assistance to reach out to their school counselor for a referral, or if you're a current client of Hill Country Community Ministries to work directly with them. Thank you so much. This past week, we released a report from our third-party consultant, Copia, who has been working with parents in our community to review our education, our special education services program. Here's Executive Director for Special Programs, Kimberly Waltman, talking about the Copia report and how it'll impact our special education services. Thanks, Corey. Many of you know that Leander ISD is a continuous improvement district. This means that we are consistently looking for ways to um, identify systems and areas that we can continue to grow in just to make this the best learning environment for our students possible. Recently, our special education department partnered with our parents and Copia Consulting to identify areas that we can create an action plan for content to continue our growth and improvement as a special education department. We have incredibly dedicated service providers, instructional assistants, and teachers that are ready to partner with our parents. Within the Copia report, you can see that there are seven areas that are identified as recommendations from our community. Our team is excited to partner with parents. We're excited to continue and grow, and we look forward to taking these seven recommendations to create an action plan for the fall to improve the special education department for our families, our community, and most importantly, our students.